for the invitation. So I, I believe we should do, in that case, uh, cervical arthroplasty. And I have no disclosures for this presentation. And, you know, this is a very interesting paper from a survey involving a lot of uh, AO Spine International members. And they, they, they recognize that, uh, that the barrier to use arthroplasty is really the, the cost, because they acknowledge that there was a faster recover and, and uh, they reduced the risk of adjacent level disease. Uh, nevertheless, there are papers in the literature showing that there is actually, this is a very highly cost-effective procedure if you take the whole picture. What are the facts about ACDF? There are a lot of biomechanical and finite element studies that show that increases the adjacent uh, segment range of motion, alters the center of rotation of these segments, and increases the, the, the interdiscal pressure. Very important slide that this is a biomechanics study showing that when you increase the SVA, that it's something that you see with aging, uh, there is an increase of intradiscal pressure. And if you compare a ratio between after and before the operation, this ratio increases with increasing SVA. And a surgery that you do when the patient is 30, you have to think what's gonna happen when the patient will be 70. Probably the SVA of this patient will increase, and this is a, this is a concern. Also, another effect of increasing SVA is this phenomenon of hyperextension at C012 and a compensatory flexion in the lower cervical spine. So any intervention that you have that it's non-physiological like fusion in the lower levels, you might have a problem later on. As we see here, you block this uh, compensation mechanism. So what about TDR? Uh, there are a lot of biomechanical and in vivo in vitro studies that uh, st that shows that arthroplasty minimizes some of these negative uh, kinematic effects. Uh, we did a study looking at, at um, different patients, different environments, looking at the, at the, the biokinematics of arthroplasty. Uh, applied this uh, this uh, software, the spine view. And we find that the, the, the center of rotation takes about one year to normalize when you do a, a arthroplasty. You can get also a good global alignment when you do arthroplasty. Uh, and I'm not going to run uh, through this, but there is very good level one data, long-term follow-up data uh, with different devices that show that you have better clinical outcomes less reoperation rates, less adjacent segment disease. You know, you just go look at seven years follow-up data, one level, two level, ProDisc again, uh, long-term follow-up data, uh, Brian and Caniflex, Movici. You know, you just can go all through all these studies and you'll, you'll see that you have good clinical results and less reoperation and less adjacent segment disease. Another secure C, long-term follow-up. If you pull all the data in meta-analysis, you reach the same conclusion. Another uh, important meta-analysis published by Zhang. And if you go to the real world database, like the national insurance uh, database in the US, you will see that uh, cervical TDR was cheaper, more savings over time, and less reoperation. So uh, TDR is probably the most the most studied uh, device in, in in spine. All the results you get are consistent among among uh, different devices, and I'm convinced that there is a potential for even better results with the use of viscoelastic compressive uh, devices. We don't have yet long term follow up for those. So I think for single level disease uh, causing radiculopathy due to disc herniation, soft or hard, myelopathy related with soft disc, with preserved eye. Uh, for me, uh, arthroplasty is the standard of care for one level, and we have now good evidence even for, for, for two levels. And there is very good level one uh, data. I think the discussion should focus on objective evidence of uh, adjacent level disease, and reoperation is, is a good criteria. Um, of course, because there is a low incidence of adjacent level uh, reoperation, 
we need long-term follow-up, we need series with large number of patients like provided by meta-analysis, or we have to look for surrogate endpoints for, for, for outcome. And for me, it's clear that it restores the index uh, level range of motion, limits adjacent levels hypermobility, uh, restores the quality of motion, not only the quantity of motion, but the quality of motion, and has a beneficial effect on sagittal alignment. Just to show you some cases here, patient that had the previous, previous fusion, now with the two-level disease, and nothing the best, the best to, to, uh, to solve a fusion problem than to use uh, arthroplasty. This is the case with long-term follow-up. I don't agree that uh, segmental kyphosis is a contraindication for ADR. This is a patient of mine with a kyphotic level standing for one year, and this is the result you got after the operation. Uh, I see more and more of these patients in my practice, multi-level disease, uh, young patients, uh, and I think it's a very good indication for, for, for this kind of surgery. Uh, these patients said uh, they have higher life expectancy, and you, if you don't use all these levels, you, you might run into trouble later on. Uh, basically, when you have multi-level, this just amplifies the problem that you get when you do one-level fusion. Uh, loss of mobility, adjacent segment hypermobility, hardware failure, pseudoarthrosis, subsidence, especially in younger age, it's, it's a risk factor for, for, for pseudoarthrosis. This is an example, a 49 years old uh, lady with uh, this multiple level disease, symptomatic. And this is what we did. We have no longer term follow-up for this patient. And we could see a significant increase in this kind. This is a small study that we did there was a significant increase in collapse this kind in, in, uh, in those seven cases. And most, most collapsed uh, discs showed a high increase in disc height, which is interesting. Also an increase in range of motion in the collapsed disc and no significant changes in, in adjacent level uh, discs. The more collapsed discs show the higher range of motion. So, it might be that collapse discs are not a, even a contraindication. Of course, uh, if you have severe spondylosis with a bridging osteophytes, with a facet joint atrosis, osteoporosis, instability, global kyphosis still remain a, a contraindication for, for ADR. Thank you.